Hello and welcome to the demonstration of the SV Stereo Rig Pro version 4.1. I will do a quick overview of the features and then demonstrate everything shortly. After that I will get into depth and demonstrate you the workflow of the rig. And at the end I will talk about the pricing. So you can also click on the time links below to skip through the parts that interest you most at the moment. Alright, the newest features and the features that make this rig a professional stereo rig are pixel parallax and the depth bracket. And with pixel parallax you know exactly how much deviation occurs and you don't have to guess anymore. You can make clear decisions on how much stereo space you are using. And with the depth bracket you can push your stereo to the optimum and squeeze near and far plane so close together that they only cover your whole scene and nothing else. With these functions you can get the maximum out of your stereo space. The formulas I'm using for that are written by David Shelton and are very powerful. So he will also get one half of the money I'm earning here. And the next feature is the floating window. With this you can extend your stereo space even further and reduce discomfort. And the rig itself is an off-axis setup, but you can also have an optional parallel auto-in setup. And for parallel setups there's also a little calculator which gives you the image width and according field of view if you want to crop and post. Then I've added a depth score calculator which will help you on planning your depth score. And if something went wrong with your uh, depth settings and you have to re-render the scene because you want to have the cameras closer together or further apart, you now have only to re-render one camera. I will show you how this works exactly later on. And you will also have an anaglyph preview in black and white full color and optimized anaglyph. With the Blackster camera shader, which is an external plugin, you can also have the preview down to cinema release 10 or even lower. And you will also have the SV viewfinder, which is a little helper for picture composition. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. Um, first, I will show you why you only have to re-render one camera. This is because now, only when you are changing your interaxial, only the right camera moves and the off-axis setup gets calculated accordingly. So if you've got too much depth you can just reduce your depth to about 10 units and only have to re-render the right camera. And what we are seeing right here, the near and far plane jumping around all the time, is the depth bracket and the pixel parallax. Get your depth score from here, put it into near plane parallax and far plane parallax, you, you have a total of 52 pixels. And then, when your interaction gets higher, the stereo space shrinks. And also when you put the cameras closer together, you will also have a greater stereo space. And then you can define in pixels how much pixels you want to use to get something out of the screen and how much you want to use to push something behind the screen. So this setup also has floating frames. This helps you to project the stereoscopic window into the audience space. So, And you can also uh, lean this window and activate the other one. So this is also a nice feature. And you can also convert this setup into a parallel rig or into a toting setup. So that's for the overview. Now let's dive into the workflow. All right, the most common situation is that you already have created a, a scene like this one, have created a camera, even animated it, and you just want the SV stereo rig to match up this camera. So for this, you just hit Control Copy and go to your scene, hit Control V, and there you go. The SV stereo rig is in your scene, and now you click on the Expresso tag. So right here, the aspect ratio and the render width of your render settings go into all my calculations. So you've seen the near and far plane are lines right now and no planes anymore. So th to get the calculations going again, you will have to go to your render settings and drag and drop your current render setting from here to here. And now if you just hit the SV Stereo Rig to get the calculations, your planes are back in place. And if you want the SV Stereo Rig to get the position and all the, all the values of this camera, 
you also get into Espresso and use your camera and drag and drop it in here. And now the SV Stereo Rig is at the same place as your camera also has the same focal length, aperture width and everything. And if you want to move the SV Stereo Rig now, it doesn't work because everything gets overwritten by this camera. So you would have to move this camera, but you also can simply delete this code right here, uh, delete, and now you can then move the rig freely. So when this camera already has an animation, the best thing to do is first override the SV Stereo rig with this camera, just as we did, then put the SV Stereo rig as a child of the camera, so the Stereo rig gets all the move and rotation values of your, of your already animated camera, and after that, you can delete this code right here and can, can build a slight offset just as you want. And the SV Stereo Rig still gets all the animation from your main camera. In Expresso, you can also decide which values of the right cam should be overwritten by the left camera. By default, all the values of the right camera get overwritten by values of the left camera. But if you want to have a different zoom or focal length or whatever, you can just deselect the, uh, the values, for example, a field of view, and now you can uh, use a different field of view on your left camera than, than on your right camera. All right, now for the pixel parallax settings. The first thing you've got to do when you've set up your scene is to put in your final image width right here. It, it, you, can, you can have a different output in here, like 800 by 600, but you will always have to know what your, your final image width will be, because all of the pixel parallax settings are depending on this value. So for preview purposes, you can, you can use 800 by 600 or something in your, in your render settings, but don't adjust it in here. This is a constant. All the changes you make in your, your output, like 800 by 600, are recalculated so your parallax stays the same even if you, if you set your resolution down. Alright, with this value you can calculate your maximum pixel separation. The calculation is pretty easy. This value just gets divided by 30 and you will get 64 pixels. Let me just show you a quick, quick formula by Louis Marcou. Normally, you will use this formula to calculate your maximum pixel separation. You will have the viewer distance multiplied by the final image width, divided by 30, multiplied by the physical screen size. All right, when you fill in the values, and for example, you have a final image width of 90, 20 pixels, uh, the screen physical size is 7 meters, the ideal position for your viewer is also 7 meters away from the screen, because then you have a, a ratio of 1 to 1. Because of this ratio of 1 to 1, we just can delete these two distances, and now we have the simple calculation of 1920 divided by 30, which is 64 pixels. But when you're doing a project for an exhibition or something, where you know exactly what the conditions will be, for example, you only have a, a screen of 30 centimeters, and the viewer can't get closer to the screen than one meter because something stands in the way or whatever, you may want to calculate all this because you can use a higher pixel separation. All right, back to the, to the scene. With this switch, you can decide if you want to use the 70-minute rule or the 90-minute rule. The 70-minute rule divides this value by 30, while the 90-minute rule divides this value by 23, which gives you a lot more pixel parallax, but it's also a bit more dangerous, because at this value, the image could get disturbing already. You also have to keep in mind, if, you, if children are watching your movies, because their eyes aren't that far apart, so uh, it's mostly common to use the 7-minute rule, because it's also watchable for children. And as far as I know, they use uh, the seven-minute rule on all feature films that are currently running. All right, over here we have the depth score in pixels. This is just a quick helper. It just sets this 46 pixel to 100%. And you can work really smoothly with these values because you can now say, 
All right, on this scene, we want to use 80%. Then there's a gimmick shot. We want to use 100% on that. And then we go down over, over 60 to 50% and finish it off. All right, and the great thing about this workflow is that you can say, all right, we will use 80% of our maximum pixel separation. And the artists only have to put in 80 in here. Knows, all right, 80% means I can use about 52 pixel separation. And then you can go down to the pixel parallax and portion it between near and far plane parallax. So with this, you can easily communicate with your artist and everybody understands what we're talking about. And while we are talking about pixel parallax, I would like to share some suggestions by Anthony Schaefer with you. I took these notes while Anthony Schaefer was talking about the stereoscopy in Disney's Christmas Carol at the FMX in Stuttgart. Just some values uh, you, you can keep in mind. So on, on interior shots, they used a maximum pixel separation of around 24 pixels, and for exterior shots, about 34 pixels. And for gimmick shots, they only used 60 pixels, not 64, but 60 pixels. So, um, but you also have to keep in mind that, that these suggestions are for uh, feature length V, and I think in an advertisement, which is really short, you can go a little bit higher, but these are, are good values to, to keep in mind. And he also talked about the discomfort zone. Um, you shouldn't push the near plane parallax much higher than 20 pixels, and the far plane parallax gets disturbing uh, around 50 pixels parallax. So keep this to a maximum of 20, and this to a maximum of 50, and, and just scale within this range. Right now you can see you've got a total of 70 pixels, so I will use 45 and 15 on that, and now I've got 60 and everything will be alright. Now I would like to give some suggestions for the depth score. On the average you should use about 30% to 90% of your maximum pixel separation. 30% is already really flat, so I wouldn't go below that. And I think 30% is already good for fast cats, because the audience needs about one half of a second to perceive depth. So the faster you cut, the flatter your image should be. And I think 30% is alright. It's not completely flat, but flat enough. And 70% is a good average value, you can also get up to 80%, but you should save the, the 90 to 100% only for important shots. So it's for example for the pack shot, for emotional shots, for great landscapes you want to show off. Just keep these, uh, these high percentages for, for special shots. Let's go to roundness interaction. This is a value in units that gives you a suggestion for a good roundness of your objects. But this just takes the distance between your convergence plane and the camera and divides this by the focal length. So this is just an approximation and you should really not rely on this. But at least it's better than nothing and you don't have to do that much guessing anymore.